Hello all, uh, practitioner here again, just finishing up from the, uh, from my God is a, a scientific proof for God, but not in this universe. So, uh, I was explaining the, de uh, why I was saying that I'm a technical agnostic, and I'd like to clarify this position. Um, of course, I presume, as you know, there are, uh, mm, the view of agnosticism is kind of complicated. Um, some atheists have said that uh, agnostic atheists are kind of a weaker position, whereas uh, you know uh, gnostic atheists are they you know they know that there is no god or something that they know there isn't a god or something like that. Um, again, atheism, strictly speaking, is just supposed to be a lack of belief. You know, it's sort of like I don't believe in a god, or uh, you know, something like that, or versus theism, which is I believe in a, I believe in a god. Um, Technical agnosticism. Uh, now, the thing, of course, is though, is that um, Penn, and Te Penn Gillette of Penn and Teller and quite a few other uh, atheists have said that agnosticism answers the, answers the epistemological question, but for a but for belief, you do have to pick between uh, atheism and agnosticism. Well, I hate to say that, but that's a false dilemma, um, and I'll say why. Uh, agnosticism, uh, strictly speaking, there is something called technical agnosticism, which is what I adhere to. Technical agnosticism is okay. This is, this is, uh, I don't know for certain one way or the other, nor do I care. I, you know, I really don't care. There are bigger issues at stake. There, the other one I'm also, uh, figuring is, well, should I come back to this issue, like I do every so often? I keep taking a look at the issue, and there does seem to be some argument for, uh, you know, there, there does seem to be a reasonable, uh, system to construct a hypothesis and a way to test for a hypothesis for a higher power, um, you know, a reasonable argument for it. But then again, there's also good arguments equally on the atheist side. Uh, you know, and the thing is that this, God is an untestable claim. Okay, either way, um, it's a, it's a uh, well, strictly speaking, under normal circumstances, it would be an unfalsifiable claim. Therefore, it's not really relevant one way or the other to test for it. If you believe in it, good, it's comforting for you. If not, you know, as long as you don't try to force, as long as you don't try to force the opinion on other people. Uh, you know, uh, my, I, again, I strongly said this before, the issue here is not in terms of whether you believe in a god or don't believe in a god, the issue is in terms of how you go about trying to, uh, trying to go about expressing your claims, uh, or expressing your beliefs to either side. Um, of course, when vis-a-vis -vis god, atheists do not make a positive claim. However, vis-a-vis, -vis, um, vis-a-vis -vis the danger of religion, they do make a positive claim. And that positive claim is that all religion is inherent, uh, or... Sorry, rephrase that. Certain atheists do make positive claims. Uh, Richard Dawkins, for one, um, saying that uh, that God is a delusion, that is a positive claim. Uh, and uh, again, that one... Okay, again, uh, now saying that God doesn't exist, you know, uh, that would be, you know, that's, that's not a positive claim. Saying that God is a sociological delusion, that is a positive claim and requires proof for it. Um... I've read, like I said, I've read a bit of Richard Dawkins' work from the um, uh, from the God Delusion, uh, but again, like I said, in the process, um, I do, and again, I've said this before that credit. I, I, I've quoted this article more times in the last few weeks than I could care to remember. Okay, but that being said, this uh, is not, again, as I said before. Um, critical thinking flaws and critical thinking fallacies have no place in an argument like this on either side of the issue. So I've already, again, I've already gone into great detail on that. As a technical agnostic, my whole approach is literally just that of critical thinking. I'm still not formulating my opinion on this, uh, as because of the fact that I've not seen, um, <clears throat> you know, enough, um, I haven't seen enough fully coherent arguments on either side yet, you know, uh, on either side of the issue yet for, uh, to get an idea. Now, the thing is, what's interesting is that, um, I already postulated a few videos back about a idea called loop quantum gravity, and I will try to re-sum up again my idea. Um, I've made references in my video creation versus evolution that uh, that scripture could be uh, argued to make a case for evolution. Um, then, of course, the question came to my mind: Wait a minute! If that actually does that, then uh, is it possible for an older group to have figured that out? Well, without enough of a sample of flora and fauna. Technically speaking, they should not have been able to guess at that. You know, it, I mean, you know, they should not have been able to guess at that. So, there's a couple of possibilities. One, sheer unlikelihood of chance. 
Two, really good science fiction writer, and they did manage to find some sort of variable, you know, to figure out that, came, that plants came before animals or that sea animals came before land animals, and then humans were the last. Or, and this is the or, uh, in the final part of it, that, uh, that some sort of higher power did talk to, uh, or, or that they tapped into some sort of universal framework or some sort of higher power or something. And here's the idea which got me on this one. The, uh, I've explained before that, um, uh, that ba basically I explained that the, uh, the comparison, Genesis 1.27 says we are made in God's image, and that we are like gods to computers. Computers break down into finite information called bits, and they do, um, uh, you know, each one for each click that we do or something like that or command, it takes, a, you know, uh, thousands or millions of these little bits to uh, cul cul uh, culminate. And if each bit had its own lifespan, we would be considered omnipotent to them vis-a-vis, -vis, and uh, much as God would be to us due to the second epistle of Peter 3, verse 8, which is a thousand years but a watch in thy sight, O Lord, showing that we have a time dilation in our own particular uh, you know, plane of existence. Again, that's according to biblical scripture. Here's the interesting bit. There are three theories, all of which... Uh, which would supposedly show that maybe uh, the, our universe is a computer simulation. One of which is the universal holographic entropy bound. This has been showing that we are in fact not three-dimensional but two-dimensional uh, owing to the way the, um, that the entropy of a black hole, which are effectively nodes of the universe, uh, grows in proportion to its surface area, not in proportion to its volume. Um, again, you can read the 25th special edition uh, uh, physics report of Scientific American to pick that up. Um, I think I've got that kicking around somewhere. Anyway, um, the next one, uh, the next theory, of course, is the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, which I just gave evidence for in the last video. Um, for every computer to do a command or a, cal or a calculation, it still has to consider which answers are the bad answers and discard them. So um, we would be the dominant timeline, and wrong answers could either be discarded in the other timeline, or uh, in some cases they could even be within our own universe. Um, you know, the fossil record uh, would be the universe as the operating system or program trying to compute uh, to the uh, highest levels of evolution. And uh, what was happening was that those were just the um, species that weren't, most, weren't supposed to survive. Those were the ones in the bad calculation. And evolution was doing that. Uh, and a perfectly plausible case would be a uh, race that had formerly evolved before us and had used a computer to try to simulate exactly what happened with the universe beforehand. We would be fully self-aware, yada, yada, yada. Um, and the third, uh, the third piece of evidence, which is not entirely, uh, which is still requiring evidence for it, but it has a telescope going up this year and would have evidence coming back, is the idea of loop quantum gravity. This is the other contingent to string theory, uh, the other um, uh, uh, um, compo um, opponent to string theory for, uh, for a unifying field between, uh, gravi between quantum mechanics and relativity. In this theory, um, it's been postulated that the... Um, that the universe, uh, in terms of space and time, break down to certain finite atoms called the Planck epoch. Uh, and each of these slowly loads, and that time is not continuous. That would actually allow for uh, time to move at a much slower rate. Uh, it, you know, time would be constantly loading. Hell, the universe could even freeze at a certain loading point, and we would not be any the wiser based on this. But here's the thing. That, like I said, this would be this final, uh, uh, um, you know, final breakdown point. And if... Um, you know, and time, uh, without time, nothing really ever happens. And since space and time are connected, therefore, uh, space-time could be held to be the, uh, the other point of information in our universe. Uh, you know, uh, could be one more point of information. Also, as well, when you get down past the quark stage, uh, you get nothing but energy left, at least as far as they've been able to find. Uh, if they ever tried to break down a quark, they got nothing but energy. Uh, so, uh, so, effectively, the universe is energy. Uh, and space and time could be considered information. Now, again, remind you, this is where the testable hypothesis comes in, because as the current telescope, uh, as a new telescope went up in 2007, uh, they're um, waiting for two wavelengths of light to come back and be recorded by this telescope in order to prove loop quantum gravity, so uh, or disprove it. So again, this is still in theory stages, but it does make it a reasonable hypothesis that the universe is a computer simulation. Um, anyway, that's just again the, purely a hypothesis. Uh, purely an idea for testing. We have to wait until loop quantum gravity is proved one way or the other uh, for the hinge on uh, this contingent. But um, you get the idea. Uh, but barring that, if there is no computer simulation for our universe, like I said in the last video, there is no God for this universe, okay? I'm still a technical agnostic on this, and I still demand proof one way or the other. Okay, uh, or, you know, um, uh, proof of that, okay? So, um, I will um, see you guys later. I hope you enjoyed these videos both. Um, again, this is just reasonable thought experiments, pure speculation. Uh, I have no idea one way or the other. 
And, uh, like I said, atheists, agnostics, please don't get angry with me. Religious people, sorry, but your religions are invalid. Yada, yada, yada. Um, toodles all.